Before you start learning to solve the acid cube, there are a few things you should know. 1. Knowing how to solve the 3x3x3 Rubik's Cube will make solving the square one a lot easier. 2. Please don't comment asking me to add a how do I turn this crazy thing section. Rather figure it out on your own. 3. Slash means turn the right side 180 degrees. In brackets, the first number is the amount of 30 degree units to turn the top layer. And the second number means the same for the bottom layer. Plus is clockwise, and negative is anti-clockwise. You'll notice I always hold the puzzle so that the little side of the middle layer is on the left. You should do the same. For this tutorial, the first thing you need to do is get the puzzle into its original shape. There are many ways to do this, but the one I will be teaching is probably the most intuitive way, and can also be very fast. As a sub-step, you'll need to get your puzzle to look something like this. All of the little 30 degree edge pieces must be grouped together. To build this large chunk of edges you need to learn how to effectively manipulate the smaller groupings of edges. You will want to try to keep your edges in chunks consisting of an even number of edges. Here you can see I have two groups of two that I would like to bring together. And I can also add this other pair to my larger group like so. More often than not, you'll have groupings of edges that are not connected in pairs, but rather resembling a flat line or a V. To get rid of a V, you will need to connect it to a group of four edges like so making it into a flat line instead. The flat line can be turned into two groups of two by adding another flat line. If only one line is present, it can be kept off to the side on a layer you will not be turning as you group all of the other edges. I have provided a link in the video description to an excellent website with a text-based explanation of grouping the edges together, in case you find written descriptions easier. Now from here, all you need to do to get the layers square is divide this chunk in two, turn both those smaller groups to the back of the puzzle and divide them simultaneously. Then turn the identical barrel patterns you have perpendicular to each other and divide them. And now line up the kite shapes and divide one last time to get the layers square. Don't worry about the middle layer at this point. If it isn't right, we'll fix it at the very end of the solve. After you get the layers square, the next step is to solve the top layer corners. I will be doing this with white. This step is very, very easy and I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out. When you're finished, you should have something like this. This step will not necessarily solve the top or bottom layers, but it will separate all of the pieces into their correct layers without rearranging the top layer corners you just solved. All you need is this algorithm, which essentially swaps this piece and this piece. One on the top, negative three on the bottom, negative three again on the bottom, negative one on the top and negative one on the bottom one on the top four on the bottom three on the bottom you may have to use that sequence more than once to get your square one looking something like this
In this step, we will be solving the corners of the bottom layer. This algorithm swaps these two corners in the front and leaves these two at the back the same relative to each other. Three on the top, negative three on the bottom, three on the bottom, negative three on the top, three on the top, negative three on the top. And now the corners are solved. Now we're left with only the edge pieces, which need only be cycled around within their own layers. For this, we use the following algorithm, which swaps these two edges with each other, and these two edges with each other on the back and right faces. Two on the bottom, negative three on the bottom, one on the top, one on the bottom, negative one on the top, two on the bottom. As an example, here's how one might use that algorithm to solve a three cycle. Here's how you might solve a z-perm. Unfortunately, there is a parity case on the square one. It occurs as a result of improperly placing pieces when making the layers square which is practically impossible to predict in any normal solve. This algorithm swaps these two edges on the top layer and should be used when you can't recognize a regular case and I say this relative to what you might expect to see when solving the last layer edges on a regular 3 by 3 cube. 3 on the top, 3 on the bottom, 1 on the top, negative 2 on the top, negative 2 on the bottom, 2 on the top, 2 on the top, and 2 on the bottom, negative 1 on top, negative 3 on the top, and negative 3 on the bottom, negative 2 on top, 3 on the top, and 3 on the bottom, 3 on the top, negative 1 on the top, negative 1 on the bottom, negative 3 on the top, 1 on the top, 1 on the bottom, and that fixes the parity. When trying to determine whether you have parity or not, keep in mind that both the top and bottom layers may have incorrectly permuted edges. So if you have two irregular cases, like I have here, then you don't have to use the parity algorithm. When you reach the end of the solve, the middle layer may be in the kite shape rather than a more preferable square shape. To fix this, use this simple sequence. Six on the top, six on the top again, and six on the top again.